Hello, this is just to say that I have eaten the plums in the ice box. They were delicious, well tasty. Uh, no, that, that was a, a poetry reference. You guys know this, this is booktube. Um, what am I doing this for? Oh, okay, so this is just a quick bit to go at the start of my June wrap up to let you know that this is also my May wrap up because I am disorganized and I don't know what books I read in which month. You'll actually see me speaking in a minute about how I didn't read much in June. So I think most of these are May. Um, yes. Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my June 2024 reading wrap up. Now, I haven't read as many books as I usually do because basically the way I, when I find time to read books has always changed. When I used to smoke, I used to go for a cigarette and read like 10 pages of my book while having a cigarette. Um, obviously I've since quit. Uh, more recently I've been reading whilst on the exercise bike and uh, I exercise pretty much every day usually alternating between running and on the bike but in June I did a 5k every day challenge so I was running every day which meant I wasn't going on the bike so the only time I really had to read was uh, like when I was commuting to places and I didn't do much of that either so expect a short month uh, this month however I do have a few for you Dane reads so I have, uh, first of all, I have uh, Terry Pratchett, A Life with Footnotes by Rob Wilkins. So I read most of this while visiting my mum in uh, Tamworth. And basically Rob was um, Terry's, Sir Terry's uh, assistant, personal assistant, eventually becoming much more than that. Like as Terry's uh, Alzheimer's progressed, Rob was taking on more and more of an important role, but kind of as a carer at times. He was also, Terry used to dictate his books to him and Rob used to type them and he'd, you know, then read them back aloud and help Terry to edit them and all of this stuff. Um, and this is just a really interesting, you know, biography of his time from growing up in Beaconsfield, which is just around the corner from me, um, to his eventual his eventual passing. Um, very hard to read over the last hundred or so pages because obviously it's Alzheimer's and it's just a brutal um, a brutal disease. Um, but yeah, beautiful book nonetheless. Had to be a five out of five for me. A definite must read for any Discworld fans. And as you can see from the tabs, a full review coming soon. Okay, then I read The Day of Creation by J.G. Ballard, and this is a very odd novel, I guess you would call it like liter literary fiction. I believe it was written near the end of Ballard's life as well, it was certainly published in the late 80s. And it's about a guy who goes out to Africa to try and drill for water and accidentally creates a river, and then spends the rest of the novel trying to destroy this river. He also sort of falls in love with a 12 year old girl, which is a bit odd. It's a very strange novel. Um, and it's slow as well, but it kind of, I don't know, it picked up after a little while because he steals this ship and goes after the source of the river. And at, at that point it got a little bit more, not, I don't want to say interesting because it was interesting throughout, but it got certainly got slightly faster paced. And it also kind of, it gave it a sense of purpose then. It, it almost reminded me of Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Um, the horror, the horror. But yeah, overall I would probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5, and a fairly weak one. The reviews called it like Ballard's Masterpiece, and I don't know if it was or not. I also read A Promised Land by Barack Obama, I actually listened to it via audiobook. I have one of the files open here actually. Chapter 26. We Go on, met for Go on Barry. Two hours that night in the Situation Room. So yeah, um, narrated by the author himself. I think it's part one of a two-parter that he had planned because I think it just kept growing and growing till he was like, I'm just gonna have to split this into two. Um, but really fascinating stuff. I also not too long ago read Becoming by Michelle Obama and A Promised Land is interesting in that it covers a lot of the same situations but from a different point of view. Um, which I wasn't quite expecting, you know, so it's kind of cool to see how his take on some events tied up with uh, Michelle's. Overall, by far the best of his, his books. I mean, I've read all three of them so far, and uh, yeah, it was a 4.5 4 out of 5 for me. Uh, probably one of the best memoirs I've read recently. And it's just interesting to see how it covers everything from the campaign trail to the decision to go after Osama Bin Laden, um, to people questioning whether his birth certificate was real or not, you know? So, yeah, definitely one to read. Okay, I also read Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens, and this was via audiobook, and this was actually before I read Obama. So I can't tell you that much about it, because I don't really remember it. Um, 
but yes, Nicholas Nickleby, it was it was alright. It was very much in the vein of uh, the Pickwick Papers in that it did feel episodic. Part of that is because it was written for episodic publication in the newspapers. Um, but yeah, more enjoyable than the Pickwick Papers, I thought. Kind of had more of a plot. Uh, takes a look at, like, Victorian life and... Um, Especially like the rich and poor divide and the the pressure on people to make enough of, a, of an income to support their families. And then I read Hunches and Bunches by Dr. Seuss. So this was a reread. Uh, I just read this with Shay because sometimes uh, we bring out Shay's inner child by re me reading bedtime stories to her. This was one of them. It wasn't as good as um, I had trouble in getting to Sola Solu, which we read last month. Um, but probably more Seuss to come because I have some more downstairs. Probably like a 3.5 out of 5, as was Nickleby, I don't know if I said that. Alright, I assume I started filming this. Did I start filming this? I did start filming this. Alright, so I've got some more books to wrap up for you. Uh, this is now near the end of September, so I've left this a little bit late, but yes. Uh, so I read, I had trouble in getting to Sola Solu by uh, Dr. Seuss. This was just one that I read with Shay uh, as part of our, I tend to read her books uh, at night. And it was fun, actually. I quite liked it. I, it was a reread for me, but I enjoyed it more this time than I did before. Basically, somebody is trying to get to Sola Solu, where there's no, no, they're going to have no more troubles. And not to spoil the ending, but by the time they get there, they realise, actually, this isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I still have issues just because I'm in a new place. They haven't gone away, you know. So, yeah, probably like a blah, 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 four out of five. Uh, then I read Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. And this was... Probably looking back on it, probably a five out of five. Um, it's basically a kind, kind of a modern day interpretation of Frankenstein set in Baghdad during uh, the US invasion of, uh, of um, Iraq. And um, basically, somebody's going around getting the, you know, the bits of bodies that are left over from explosions and stuff and stitches them together into a creature. And this creature then wants to get revenge on the people who are responsible for like the deaths of the people who owned his constituent parts i suppose um there are a lot of characters to keep track of and from a western point of view it can be difficult to keep track of them because they all have you know iraqi names so you know it just is sometimes more difficult than if it's like okay that one's dave that one's steve that one's bob you know but anyway um overall very worth reading it was uh, long listed possibly even shortlisted for the man booker prize i think and i can see why um definite contender for one of my top 10 books of the year uh then we had the day the screens went blank by uh danny wallace and this was probably a strong four out of five it's a sort of a uh, middle grade book about uh the day the screens go blank so basically one day out of the blue anything with a screen no longer works um and it kind of tackles this like phenomenon in, in our in our civilization or whatever our modern society of like ipad parenting parenting by proxy that sort of stuff i mean you're watching this video right now on a device with a screen so you wouldn't be able to watch this video after the screens went blank um and the family kind of rediscover themselves and what it's like to be a family but also they realize how heavily reliant they are on technology they also worry about their grandma who lives like on the other side of the country um so they set out to go and make sure that she's okay because none of them can remember her phone number it's just all saved in their phones and obviously it's kind of it's not quite apocalyptic but it's also not far off it i mean there are all kinds of vehicle accidents the roads are jammed and actually they find it difficult to find where grandma is because although they have her address there's no sat nav and they're bad at map reading so they're, they're struggling to figure out how to get there uh yeah it's a very interesting book and then at the end the resolution is essentially that there is no resolution and that um you know the screens aren't coming back so get used to it it's the new normal which is very like covid 19 -y, you know okay then we have rama 2 by arthur c clark and this is just a continuation in his rama series i've uh, seen online a lot of people say just don't read after the first rama book um rendezvous with rama which to be fair that is my favorite arthur c clark book rama 2 wasn't as good as that but i also don't think it was as bad as a lot of people make it out to be um it was very readable it was much more like more of an adventure novel focus on the characters and the interplay between them rather than science fiction per se um, but it still had a lot of this mysteriousness to it like we don't really know what Rama is and what the Ramans want and all of this stuff but then there's this kind of human intrigue at play as well so uh, for me probably a 4.5 out of 5 it was still very good 
and wasn't quite as good as Rendezvous with Rama. Uh, then we have A Room Swept White by Sophie Hanna and I'm gonna have to look at my review of this because again it has been a while since I read this and Sophie Hanna I've read a lot of books by her is this the one I think it is no see this is a different one than the one I thought it was uh, this one is about a documentary that's following the fortunes of a few different women who were convicted of murdering their babies and later found to be innocent and suddenly one of the women is murdered and our story kind of begins through there uh, we see the story through a bunch of different eyes like we see the police in, uh, investigation into it we also see it through the eyes of a woman who kind of ends up taking over the job of shooting this documentary after the previous director pretty much says this is for you to do which is weird because it was kind of his passion project and she herself actually has a bit of in her past that kind of gets revealed throughout the novel that makes it quite relevant for her to take it on as well um but yeah it was a very good thriller i gave this one a four out of five i think it's one of sophie anna's better ones um i guess because it, it's almost less thriller more crime i would say um, so, you know, it's less Gone Girl and Girl on the Train and more, you know, fucking Peter James or whatever. <laughs> All right, then we have Bayou, which I believe was a magazine. I've just got Bayou on my notes. I actually need to update my notes as well, but okay, Bayou magazine issue number 78. Uh, I'm just going to read you my review of this one because, again, it's been a while. Uh, yeah let's see yeah i actually read this june the second so uh so this is another short but sweet little literary magazine which i believe was sent to me after i submit some work for publication there's a nice little mixture of work there from some poetry that was right up to my up my street to some fiction that wasn't but which i could still appreciate and some non-fiction that i found to be both gripping and thought-provoking which is always a good mix i've read a few different issues of bio magazine i actually guess they no longer send them out to me because i haven't had one for a while uh, but they've all been worth picking up. I just don't know if I can necessarily recommend this particular issue over all of the others. Uh, but I gave it a 4 out of 5. Then we have The Last Theorem by Arthur C. Clarke. And this was actually one of his last books. Uh, what's interesting is there's a big Sri Lanka connection to this. It's basically set in Sri Lanka, which is where Clarke spent most of the end of his life. And... Um, it's an interesting read. The Last Theorem, where it gets its, its name from, is Fermat's Last Theorem, and uh, the main character is trying to prove it. So we have this, like, the first half of it is like this kind of mathematical, science-y, contemporary read about this dude who wants to be known for being a great mathematician. Then he gets kidnapped by like modern-day pirates and held hostage for a while, and then aliens are showing up. So it's, it's a bit of a mess in that respect, but I did still really enjoy it. Um, I don't know, I don't think it needed the aliens or necessarily the pirates. I guess you could have, you know, maybe keep the pirates but get rid of the aliens. Because the pirates made sense in context. The aliens just felt like an un unnecessary add-on that he'd put in there to make it come across as more Arthur C. Clarke, you know? Um, but yeah, still did very much enjoy it. Probably, probably a 3.5 out of 5 for me. All right, and finally we have Bennett, and again, which Bennett? Okay, so this is Alan Bennett, A Life Like Other People's, uh, which is actually part of Untold Stories, which I'd already read. Um, so I did reread like 15% of this and then realized that I'd already reread it. Um, it was good, but just kind of read Untold Stories. Uh, probably like a 3.5 out of 5 for me, I don't really know. Bennett does this a lot where he publishes like shorter excerpts of his longer books doesn't really need to be done just read the longer things so there we have it three months later finally got to it those are all of the books that i read in the month of june so as always don't forget to let me know in the comments what uh, what you thought of these books if you read them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button for more and i will see you soon for another books video thanks a lot Bye bye